Hey guys, Barney Boy here again today and we are going to be looking at my new video for a review of the brand new iPad Pro 2020. Again, this model is 128 gigabytes, 12.9 uh, inch display and is indeed a very nice iPad. I've actually got a few accessories that we'll go through as well. Uh, firstly, a Apple uh, sleep and wake case all round protection and also the Apple Pencil. Uh, just a couple more features I want to talk about today um, and just to discuss and see what is cool about the iPad Pro uh, with Toby helping me as well. So one of the things I want to talk about particularly is on the settings. <clears throat> so some things you may want to do when you first get your iPad Pro, you've set it up, you've uh, linked your ID to it and things like that and you just want to see what you can do in terms of uh, more unique and personalized features. <clears throat> so the first thing I suggest is go to your settings. You want to go to display and brightness. Now on display and brightness, you've got a few options. Uh, one being uh, first, as you can see here with small pictures, I can't look at closer, is light and dark options. So currently we're on light. Then when we go over to dark, we'll see that it all just turns into a dark, might be more uh, pleasing to the eye when it's dark in, in the evening and things like that. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to keep it on light. I actually do prefer that. And you may want to consider going on to automatic. Uh, one being the options there, light until sunset or custom schedule. But for this, I want to keep mine as off automatic for now because it is coming into the evening. Uh, a couple of other features you've got here, obviously True Tone. Uh, your night shift, again, that's about the display and things like that. Your lock and unlock, auto lock, and your text size. So text size, I always tend to have it on standard in the middle, but you may wish to have it, one, a higher text size depending upon your eyesight or preference, and also a bold text. Now, the benefit of this iPad compared to some previous models, why is that not clicking? There we go. Compared to some previous models is uh, that when you would go into a bold text or a larger text size, you actually had to uh, restart the iPad or iPhone before it take effect. On this, it happens automatically. So we're gonna keep that there. Something else you may wish to go on to is when you go to accessibility and we scroll down to your face ID and attention. Of course, you wanna set up face ID on this. It's one of the cool things with this feature but also you can set it up to recognize alternative faces. So say if there's a couple of you in the house <clears throat> and you want to all have face ID for the same iPad, you can set that up to work like so. One thing I went over the other day as well um, on Safari and particularly with the keypad was that of course, when you get your keypad and it's full size, like it is here and you're typing away, it can, it can be a little bit, uh, not inconvenient, but maybe uh, it can be done a bit of an easier method and that is by pinching the keyboard to make it to a movable one similar to the size you may have on your iPhone. Uh, and that allows for just so much single-handed typing as so, as you can see there. But one thing that this iPad doesn't have is swipe to type. So when you're on the large keyboard, like so, you can't say if you want to type hello, you cannot swipe it like that. You have to go H-E-L-L-O. However, there is a way to do the swipe to type. And by doing that is if you pinch the keyboard and you can swipe to type on the smaller keyboard version, then you are swiping to type, which will make your life a lot easier depending upon what you are doing. So I'll exit off there. Now, one of the things I want to talk about again was of course the pencil we've briefly gone over already how to have the screenshot taken with the pencil fantastic we're going to delete that because i don't want it and that is just a case of swiping up from the corner there and also uh, another thing that i think is fantastic when you go on to settings and you go on to home screen and dock as seen here we can see we've got app icons display so you may wish to have more, which is a standard view as so here, which is what I tend to use, or you may choose to have a bigger display. So depending upon your, your preference or eyesight, whatever, you can tap the bigger option and it brings through nice, big sized app icons that are very difficult to miss. Now I wanna have it on more. And one thing that I really like is today view on the screen. So you can have that there, but we don't want worry about that and is the multitasking 
show suggested and recent apps in the dock. So what that basically means is when you swipe up, you can see the Siri app suggestions there, which tend to be the more popular apps you use, whether that be Safari, Facebook, um, whatever. So that's a cool feature to have uh, and something that I certainly enjoy, which I will be having to continue indeed. Um, so of course, yeah, again, just standard with the eye pencil, it's just things like that. Uh, one thing that I particularly use the eye pencil for is again, like I mentioned the other day, uh, you know, your sketchbooks, uh, your drawing apps, it's fantastic. And obviously just the general writing, whether you're taking it to a lecture or whatever it may be. And the final thing I wanted to quickly go over today was the Apple uh, case for the iPad Pro 12.9 inch 2020. So we'll just put this iPad in the case. A uh, couple of cool things with this case is firstly, it's its color. It's a nice, nice pink. Uh, I do love pink. It's not actually my case, but if it was, it'd be a pretty cool pink. Um, the pencil is of course charged by the iPad here. So that's the uh, pencil charging, but you don't want to have that pencil there when the case is shut like so, because you obviously lose it because it's only held on by a bit of uh, magnetic strip. Instead, what this case actually has is a slot up here for the pencil, like so. Uh, although that's not necessarily charging, uh, one thing you can do is just push it up from the bottom and there you go, there's your iPad. <clears throat> And the one thing uh, I really like about this case is, of course, this option to uh, sleep and wake the iPad. So if you just watch, just by removing this case, opening it, I'm trying to open it slowly here. So just by opening it slowly, we'll see that the iPad automatically wakes up. And the same happens when you close the case. So if you just watch the iPad as that case shuts, and that's now gone off. And then again, if we open it, the iPad will turn on. Uh, of course, your benefits of this iPad is the option of doing this. So you can have it like that on that display when you want to watch something. Or again, like this, you can have it on that display when you want to have it in portrait mode or landscape mode. So that's just one of those lovely features there. Again, full access to the cameras, full access to the face ID function, and of course, the swipe up to open. Uh, I think that's it for now with the side. I just wanted to go over those two, the main two features that I had seen in the accessories, that being the case in the eye pencil. Uh, as always, please do smash that like button, press subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss any future videos from myself. Um, until I get the newest iPhone, uh, the next videos uh, will probably just be focusing on the iPad again and 